Hello everyone, welcome to our second instalment of Confessions of a Fundraiser. Um, I'm Harriet, I'm the Fundraising Support Officer at Dig Deep and this is Declan, so I'll let you introduce yourself, Declan. Yeah, uh, hi everybody, uh, my name is Declan and I am the team leader for Scotland this year, done it last year, a uh, trip got postponed, so uh, back to do another round. We are very pleased, I like obviously with postponements of trips, it's not ideal but we get to keep you on for another year, so that's great for us. Um, so yeah, you started recruiting last year and um, continued this year. Um, so I think it would be good to start with whatever your favourite fundraiser has been so far, just to start on a positive note. Yeah, no worries. Uh, so my favourite fundraiser would uh, probably be a pub quiz that uh, me and another member of our team done in around February time. Uh, it was a really, really good fundraiser because like, it's such an easy way to get like all your friends involved and stuff like that. Um, like, it's always a good laugh. Uh, another, another one that we're doing just now as well is the is we're doing a virtual challenge. Uh, so this is like quite a good way to fundraise the, uh, with everything that's kind of like going on just now. So what we are doing is we're walking, running and cycling uh, 5,895 kilometres, which in metres is the height of Kilimanjaro. So it's quite nice to kind of like kind of play on that. Uh, that's been quite good. We've raised quite a bit through that and it's getting like the newer member the, me, members of the team to um, like know each other because we're sharing our distances and stuff. No, it seems I've obviously been following it on Instagram and stuff, but it, like you said, it seems like a really nice way to um, sort of keep the people who were signed up last year really engaged with the trip, but also welcome your new members in. So it's great, and like I said, it seems to be going well so far. But um, so have you shared those distances equally, or do you just sort of track it week by week what people are doing? Yeah, so I kind of like on our Facebook page, I kind of read, our Facebook group even, and um, I just post uh, like every Sunday. Can you share your distances? And then um, I add them up, and then like, every so often I'll put a, um, an update on to the Instagram, and then members of the team can like take that update and put it on their own socials, and then share their donation links so that um, like everybody's who who's involved is um, like they're getting updates and stuff like that. And what you can really often find is like if people are donating, then they do like to see uh, like their progress and the team's progress and stuff like that. So yeah, it's quite good. Oh, it sounds great. It's so nice that everyone's kind of involved in it and can make of it what they want to, and especially being able to do it in other, like you say, cycling, walking or running. Um, yeah. Because it just means that everyone can get involved, which is great. Um, so sort of moving on, I can imagine that we all know the answer to this, but what's been your biggest challenge uh, so far with recruitment and fundraising? Yeah, probably a staying obvious of it, but um, coronavirus has uh, it's been very hard hitting. Um, but that like that's kind of across the board. It's obviously not just like deep. It's the whole charity sector has been like really really hardly hit. Um, and our fundraising hasn't been any different, and neither has members of my team. Uh, but at the same time, like uh, it's been an opportunity to show a bit of resilience, which is a bit cheesy, but this is, is very true. Um, and like at the start, uh, like everybody was virtually fundraising and stuff like that. Um, so it, obviously it is, that's definitely been the biggest challenge, but um, like I think people have kind of like risen to it. Uh, we're doing really well. Mm -hmm. um, everybody's kind of on track, meeting their targets and stuff like that. Um, with recruitment as well, uh, like my biggest challenge um, was like accepting that everybody that you talk to uh, like might not sign up and that sounds like really really obvious but it can be a bit demoralizing but like, you, know, you speak mm -hmm. to like so many people at the fresh affair and then like only a few turn up and like it, it can be but that doesn't mean that it's like it's all doing gloom like uh, when you do sign people up like what, you, what you've done is amazing because you're giving somebody an amazing life experience but you're also giving them the opportunity to change so many lives like uh, up in Kenya so like that that's two big challenges but uh, like they're so so worth it and you get so much from it. Yeah definitely I think I totally agree with everything you said Um, obviously we've been really impressed with the resilience that people have shown and actually it's I think as a silver lining uh, lockdown and stuff has given people an opportunity to be really like creative with their fundraising um, and actually it seems to have pulled the teams together a lot more like you say doing that virtual challenge 
has given the team a real opportunity to reach something together, which is really nice. Um, but obviously with recruitment, um, I agree with you, like the amount of people you talk to throughout the year and then they might not sign up, it can be difficult, especially when you're putting so much into it. And I know last year, um, sort of with your recruitment season, it, it maybe wasn't as you imagined it would be. But I think since lockdown has happened, you've managed to recruit um, like enough people to double the size of your team, which is, yeah. <laughs> which is bizarre, but also really nice, which is great. So like I say, whilst it can be a bit demoralizing at times when people don't go through that registration process, the people that you do get signed up to the team really make it worth worth the time of putting in those phone calls and talking to people in schools and stuff like easy. So it's really nice for you to say that it kind of it does get better. I think that'll be really reassuring yeah. for people who are recruiting at the moment. Yeah. Um, so sort of going on from that, um, what do you think, obviously you've still got another year to go before you climb, but so far what have you learned from the experience? Um, of these yeah. yeah, so I'd say there's a few things. So um, I think there's this TV side of it, um, and like I think that's really really important. Um, so I've gained quite a lot of transferable skills, um, like uh, organisational skills, working in a team, uh, your leadership skills. Like these are all things that employers rate, rate so highly. Um, so like those are things that um, I've learned and been able to work on uh, through being a team leader. Um, but personally, like I think I've just became a lot more constant and sure of myself. Uh, like I remember when I done my first fresh affair last year, like, uh, like I was so so nervous. But um, like the more you do of them, uh, like the easier it gets, and the more people you talk to, and um, the process becomes a lot easier. I think that's like I would say that that's kind of a sign of me becoming a lot more sure of myself, and I think that's what being a team leader has given me. I'm not uh, convinced I maybe would have gotten that experience and learned from what I did from this experience uh, if I didn't do the team leader role. Um, uh, and as well, uh, I know it's like such a cliche, but like you're making like such such a difference. And like that's what I'm learning. Sometimes it's easy enough to forget about what you're doing um, and the difference that it's making. But like every penny that's fundraised and every team member who joins up, every fundraiser, like it's all going towards uh, something a lot, lot bigger that's happening in Kenya. So yeah, I would say I've, I've learned quite a lot and it's been really, really rewarding. Brilliant. Oh, that's good. It's really nice, obviously, like I say, those CV elements um, are really important. Those transferable skills are crucial, but it's really nice to hear that it's kind of had that personal effect on you as well. Um, I definitely agree. I mean, like before I climbed Hilly, I could barely bring myself to like speak to strangers um, and now it's literally my job. Um, so it's yeah. really nice that it's kind of had that impact on you as well. Um, I mean, we were talking just before we started recording about how uh, we've kind of gone from not wanting to be on camera to being able to sit and record. And talk yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's obviously, I mean, it still might not be, uh, you might not be looking for a career in like TV or anything, <laughs> but um, <laughs> it, is, it does bring you a long way and like being able to have those conversations and I think especially like people underestimate how much a freshers or a volunteering fair can build your confidence because you literally have to approach people who may have no interest in what you're talking to. Yeah. So, yeah, that's really nice to hear that it's kind of giving you that confidence and I think it's definitely shown um, with regards to like how you now recruit and how you use your social media and stuff, which is really nice because obviously it's, it's great to see that it's having that impact and can't imagine like what another year of doing it will do to you, which is great. Yeah. Um, so obviously it can be, we've talked about the kind of barriers at the moment, uh, which might be stopping people from signing up. Do you have any tips uh, for anyone who's thinking about signing up but maybe a bit worried about fundraising? Yeah. Um... Uh, yeah, it's it, it, it's not as difficult as you think, um, and some people might laugh at me when I say that. But uh, two thousand six hundred is obviously it's a lot of money to fundraise, no denying that. But um, if you break it down into a few different fundraisers, then it's it's not as big as you think it is. And what you actually get is this big big figure that seems impossible to get. Whereas actually, if you break it down into smaller ones, then you think, oh no, wait, I can actually do this, and. Um, I would also suggest to people, if you play to your strengths, you're, you're going to be fine. Uh, so take me as an example. Um, I play and watch a lot of football, as do my friends. That's sort of a play, uh, 
like kind of all my social circle does a lot. So I played to my strengths and I'm going to be having a uh, like football charity tournaments and matches and uh, like FIFA tournaments as well. So that's another example of the virtual fundraising that worked really well. Um, there's also a vast amount of resources on the Dig Deep page. Um, they'll give you lots of inspiration. Uh, and obviously if that isn't enough, we've got um, uh, everybody at Dig Deep able to help you as well as uh, your team leader, which if you're in Scotland is me. Um, uh, honestly, though, it, it's, it's genuinely, it isn't as big as people worry about. Um, but at the same time, I can like sympathise why it would seem like that. But it, it, it's very, very doable. And I think another thing that makes it so, so worth it is, is making a difference. So like every fundraiser that you do, it, it's going towards something like really, really amazing. So you're getting a... Uh, like you're getting the chance to change lives and get the experience of a lifetime. So that's something that I would suggest if people do sign up to keep in mind because like at the end, it's going to be definitely worth it. Definitely, that's excellent. It's kind of like everything I would touch on when I have a call with someone. It's like that playing to your strengths, I think is something that's really um, kind of underestimated when you fundraise. Like you've just said, like you're interested in football, like definitely um develop that into fundraisers because it's something you're yeah. interested in as well so it's going to make it a lot easier um and i do agree obviously you can see why people would see that as a big figure but once you do break it down um and like you say into those sort of separate fundraisers it actually becomes a lot more manageable so yeah i think as well what sometimes people forget is that it can be quite fun to do like uh like that fifa tournament that we done virtually like that was that was incredibly fun because you had like all your friends and then you know you hold uh so you had all the the bragging rights as well uh so like it's fun as well i think that's what people think yeah definitely i think like you say obviously you put in that organization beforehand but then um on the day it's so enjoyable and it's something that you could probably recreate quite easily once that initial legwork's been done um, so that's excellent um, so obviously you've talked quite a lot about the things you've learned enjoyed and things like that um, if you had to say like what your favorite moment or thing was so far what would you what would you pick uh, yeah I'd probably say it was getting all my all, like, all my friends involved um, because uh, I know that when I do um, climb Kilimanjaro and then uh, like go to Zanzibar after, it, like I've got all, all my friends from back home doing it with us, so we we're doing it as like uh, as a group, um, which uh, is amazing. Um, that's a, a been another silver lining uh, to like um, doing recruitment again this year is uh, being able to get kind of like all my friends involved. Um, also met some amazing people through uh, doing the team leader role, and I think. Uh, like I've got another year to do it, so hopefully meet a few more along the way. That's great. It's really nice. Like it is such a good opportunity for to do something with your friends and get your group off on an adventure that you probably wouldn't have done before. Yeah. So like all the other people on your team who you've met, like I think by the time you've climbed and everything like that, you'll be just as like close with them as you. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Amazing. Well, thank you very much for uh, talking to us. It's obviously been really nice to hear what you've been up to and stuff through lockdown um, and that you're still really excited about the trip, obviously. We know it is a year later than uh, planned, but hopefully it's going to give you the opportunity to hold some really great fundraisers and get some really more amazing people on your team. So I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, no, it's been really nice. Um, but I will catch up with you soon. And yeah, thank you very much for being on our blog. Yeah, no worries. Thank you, Bye.